Hello and welcome to another free tutorial here on YouTube. Recently I watched a tutorial about this disco ball effect and uh, it was a few minutes in because he explained very well what the issue is and what, you know the topology you need to create this effect and then the entire tutorial was about uh, or was using Houdini and I have no idea how to use Houdini so I stopped the video but I kept thinking about it and I thought how can we do this in Blender? And so I played around a little and I figured out that he was actually using a remesher tool that is somehow built into Houdini that is also available as its own separate app that you can download and, and really just it's just starting it up. It's very easy. <laughs> so I tried that and it's, it's amazing. And this is perfect for this disco ball effect because the, the entire uh, trick to this whole thing is to remesh your model for like almost perfect squares all over it. So in this first tutorial, I'm gonna show you what's, what is this tool, where can you get it, uh, how can you use it, and then we're gonna create some disco ball effects. And in the second tutorial, we're gonna take this entire concept and based on this remeshed topology, we're gonna recreate what he also showed in his tutorial, which is that keycap artwork where you actually take a keycap like from your computer keyboard and you place all sorts of keycaps onto a model or a base model instead of mirror pieces you put keycaps on and it gives a very interesting look and we're going to recreate that and that is going to be using animation nodes right i hope you're as excited as i am let's jump into blender let's do this <laughs> Here I am in Blender 2.93 beta. I'm not using uh, 3.0 because animation nodes doesn't work right quite yet. And for the second part, like I said, we're gonna use animation nodes. So we're just gonna do 2.93 all the way. Um, now, first of all, let's see what the actual the, the problem is. Why is it so hard to make nice looking like disco balls? Okay, so. Um, well, the, f the thing about disco balls is maybe I'm just gonna put in a UV sphere here, Chi, and bring it up a little. And we're gonna look at this over here. Maybe I switch this over to this so that it renders faster. Um, so along here, the equator uh, sort of, it looks it looks okay. Like this would be how you, how you stick on uh, little mirror tiles or squares to get a disco ball. Maybe not just like that. Maybe you would do it like um, shift it over or something. Um, but this is fine to begin with, except for the top here, where if I switch on wireframe, we can see that this is definitely not what we would do if we had to stick on little square um, mirror tiles, right? We don't have infinitely sharp uh, shards of mirror that we can stick here and, and also these here and even these. So, so this would be okay for uh, like in this area, but up here it, it, it sucks. Right now, the other thing, what do we have? It would be an icosphere and we get triangles. Now this would, would probably make an interesting disco ball made out of triangles, but we know that the disco balls are always um, made out of little squares usually, or little like cut up shards for certain areas, but most of, most of it, it's just uh, squares. So this is not uh, good either. So really, the whole problem here is the the mesh, is the geometry, the topology, right? Because making uh, the the mirror pieces that's easy. We will do that at the end. That's really easy. But how do we get that mesh data to look like we actually used like a styrofoam something, and then stuck on some some mirror squares? And the trick here is remeshing. Now, you know we have remeshing tools in Blender, but they're not really good for this kind of thing. And that is because we have to think about how, like where is the flow of, of the edges? So what we want really is optimized topology, like if you were to make it manually, like if you, if you uh, model a face, uh, you know you have like edges going around here, loops, basically loops of, of edge loops, right? And then down here, and then you have edge loops here. 
and this is how you would manually model this to be optimized. Um, but if you get in a model um, of anything, then you don't have these perfect edge loops. So uh, we need a remesher tool and there is an awesome tool and that is actually mentioned in that video uh, that, I, that I was talking about and that is built into Houdini somehow. I have no idea how Houdini works, but um, you can download this tool from uh, this GitHub address and you can get it for Windows, Mac and Linux. And it's a, a, a little self-contained application. You just have to start it up. It's not built into Blender. There is an, an API sort of a, like a bridge uh, add-on for Blender that um, you can use then it, it calls this app on the batch interface or something like that. Uh, we're just gonna use it standalone. So this is a Blender Plus um, this uh, tool tutorial and this tool is called Instant mes Meshes, right? So you go to this address, you download it for your uh, operating system and then you have Instant Meshes and when you start it up, it looks like this. The UI is a little bit weird, but it works and it works really well. So for example, and it even comes with some, some example files, like let's do, why not, let's do the bunny. Okay, so you can load a bunny in or you can go open mesh and then click here and you can open whatever uh, OBG file you have. For example, I got this a skull model from TurboSquid, so we can look at that uh, in a second. So this is the bunny that the application comes with. I think this is the very famous Stanford bunny. And then this is really the entire UI you get. Uh, there's some options here. I'm gonna check these checkboxes, yes. And then you just click on, so here you can set the target vertex count it is set to like 3.5K and that's fine. We can click on solve and then we get this, which looks a bit weird at first. But once you know what this actually represents, it makes perfect sense. These are the detected edge loops for, for the optimized mesh, quad based mesh. Actually, it's like um, optimized to be squares even, okay? So this tool is pretty awesome actually. <laughs> um, and this is what it auto detects. So we would get some edge loops going down this way and then going around like this, which is perfect, right? We will get some edge loops this way and then some going this way. And here it's going around like this. So really, I, I, I don't think I would model this any differently. Even if you look up here, maybe here I would do something different. But if you look up here, it even detects this like edge here. So we, it, our loops are going this way. And down here on the ear, you can see it goes this way and then some edges going this way. So this is really, this is amazing. This is like perfect. And this was the first solve button. And then when you, once you have that, you click the second solve button. And this is a preview of the actual geometry that it would generate. So you would get edge loops going this way, right? And you can see it's like, it's like optimized to be squares. Now we get, we do get some uh, like poles here and stuff, but I mean, that's, that's just how it is, you know? Um, Anyway, this is like, this is way better than any mesh that I would manually produce. <laughs> so I really love this remeshing tool and, and it's not just good for um, making disco balls. Um, this is, this is like perfect. I will use this for remeshing everything in the future, I think. So what can we actually do? Because up until now, this is all automatic. Well, there are some options and the, the coolest thing here is this tool here. So you enable this tool. So let me click on solve here again. So we get this preview and uh, you have to switch it off to turn the view. And this is, like I said, the UI is a little bit weird. So you can scroll in and out. You can use your left mouse button to rotate and you can use the right mouse button to pan the view. And if you enable this tool, then you can't do anything anymore but you get this feature of a drawing. So you have to switch it off, rotate, and then you can switch this tool on, and then you can draw on hints for instant meshes to generate your desired uh, like flow of edges. And this is like mind blowing to me because 
I don't like these edges going this way and this way. I want a straight edge going this way. So I just draw in a line and instant meshes recalculates everything and says, okay, you want this to go that way. So now we get really good topology here. I mean, this is, this is pretty amazing to me. Like I said, this looks good to me, right? The ears look good. I have, this is, so what am I thinking here? I'm thinking, where would I, how would I stick on little squares of um, mirror tiles? And really, this is how I would do it. I would stick some going up this way, right? I would stick them going here and then across here. I would stick them going this way. So this, this really looks good to me. Do we care about the bottom? I don't think so. Uh, but we do care about this here. So it auto detected like a loop going around here, which is fine. Maybe we want to draw in a circle here. I don't know if that uh, does anything. And maybe back here also, we want this to go around this way. Then switch off the tool and see what we get. Yeah, this makes sense, right? This is probably how we would be sticking on a uh, little tiles for our mirror. So this, this is perfect. Now let's click solve. We get this. That's fine with me. Looks good. When we can click export mesh. Uh, if you uh, switch on pure quad meshes, because this still does have some occasional triangles in there. And if you uh, switch on uh, pure quad meshes, then you get one level of subdivisions, which of course, if you subdivide a triangle, you, you get quads. But I don't think we care right now. So let's extract mesh. Um, if you do get some, like some weird things sticking out, maybe sometimes you can do some smoothing here. So you can do like two levels of smoothing, extract again. Now this looks, already looks like a disco ball in this application here. Then you click save. You s let's save it out. Let's call it bunny ream meshed. I can't type. And you have to type in the extension obj. I mean, it could add it automatically, but it doesn't. So you have to type dot obj speichern. I have the German version. That's why it says speichern. You just click save. And then in Blender, like always, you'll go, where is it? Import obj. We have bunny remeshed.obj. We import that. It is teeny tiny down here. So let's scale this up. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Put it down, maybe scale it like this. And uh, before we do anything else with it, maybe like this, we go control A and we apply all transforms. So now we have this object in here a white bunny. And let's look at the topology. This looks like it might make an actually cool disco ball, right? So now all that's left is let's make a disco ball out of this. Um, and really the easiest way I, I tried um, doing it with a geometry nodes because I really wanted to place little square tiles. But I, I, it's just a lot of work and it's um, there's no use to it. This is having good topology, which you get from that instant meshes tool, uh, is like the only thing you need. So let me show you how this works. Let's go into edit mode and you can see that this mesh that we get from instant meshes has um, the edges. So if we are in edge mode, you can see some of them are orange and most of them are like this greenish, cyan color. What is that cyan color? That is mark sharp. So not all of them are marked sharp, but most of them. Now I'm going to select all. So hit a uh, and mark sharp. And now all of them are greenish cyan. Okay, so that's the first step we can get out of edit mode. And we add our first modifier, which is the edge split modifier. You can switch off this edge angle. We just want to split the entire mesh along sharp edges and all of our edges are sharp. So now what does that do? If we have two faces next to each other, they share an edge. The edge split modifier actually creates a new edge and makes this face its own thing. 
in this phase it's only thing not not own object but you know we we don't have one shared edge anymore this one has its own edges all all around and this one does and we can look at that or i can show you that by using a displace modifier here you can see each one of those little squares mostly squares almost all squares <laughs> is um, its own thing so we can actually move this out a little bit each face individually like with the displace modifier and in fact I will use a little bit of a displace without a texture on it just displace 0.1 okay to move them out a little just so we get a little bit of a, um, a gap in between them because that's gonna look nice then we add another modifier we do solidify and we're gonna hold down shift drag to the left which makes them go outwards right because we want even more uh, gap here so we get this okay so now these will be our little uh, squares of mirror something like my negative uh, 0.02 okay now we can already see we have a uh, smooth shading here so my entire bunny here by the way where is my bunny it's in here so let me move this to the scene collection so the bunny is here is has a shade smooth on it so right click shade flat and then these all of them look look perfect cool and then one other thing we want to do here with the solidify is materials we want to give the rim so the generated like the sides of the solidify modifier which is the rim we want to give that an offset of one because now uh, we're gonna actually go in here and we're gonna do some materials so our default material is white here we're just gonna rename that to mirror and we're gonna make a mirror out of it let's get rid of the principle to put in a shader glossy which is like a perfect mirror with a roughness of 0 0.05 or something okay so now we have little mirrors and the sides Hold on a second, where is my camera focus? That's this guy here. Let's move him to the eyes. So we have this in focus. But the sides of, of every single little piece, uh, how do I look at this? Like this side part here is also a mirror. We don't want that. So we take another material, new material. Let's call it mirror side. And this is just supposed to be like, I don't know, black. So if we switch to rendered view and I'm rendering in cycles here, this is what we get. Cool. Maybe my displace is a bit much. Let's do 0 0.05 because the, the solidify makes a little bit of a, a gap anyway. So this would be the bunny disco ball bunny now there's one thing missing and that is these edges here these corners are infinitely sharp now but we can increase the look of this like by a thousand percent by simply adding a bevel modifier now of course this is way too much so we have to turn this down quite a bit and we just want a teeny tiny bevel and these teeny tiny bevels, they catch the light everywhere. So you can see, just look at this. Let me make this bigger. Look at this and compare it to without the bevel, right? This makes all the difference. And we have a disco ball bunny. And it was really super easy because of instant meshes, my new favorite tool, which is not Blender, but it is it is amazing it's awesome um so maybe we should just look at one more uh, example of of um, using instant meshes and getting it into blender do the same thing just once more real quick let's disable the money make it disappear let's go back to instant meshes open a new mesh click here pick the skull 
So this is the model that I downloaded from TurboSquid, which is a free model. You can find the link in the description down below. So we can see we're gonna get 2000 uh, and something K, or, I mean 2000 uh, vertices. So um, one thing here, if you have a really low poly model and you get it into instant meshes, then this will be a very low number and you will get the result will also be low poly. And if you don't want this, you can change this slider here and it will like subdivide your mesh to get higher resolution if you, if you need. But we're just gonna leave it that way. Click on solve and look at what we get. And this is exactly what I talked about before. So the automatic um, edge loop detector of instant meshes is, does a really good job. It has like these loops going around here, but you can see here we get like these weird like til tilted lines here and this these loops here, they don't look correct. If you've ever modeled a face mesh, which I haven't done, but I've seen enough tutorials <laughs> that I know that this is not what you would want. Um, you would want something like let me show you, click on the little tool. You would want a loop going this way. You would want a loop going here. You would want a loop here, maybe here, something going around here, here. So you can draw in all of those edges that you would switch it off, rotate, switch it on again. This should go down straight here. And then we need loops here as well, right? So maybe this way. Now switch it off again. Let's look down here. Switch this on again. So we want a loop going like this. Let's see what do we have up here. This, this looks interesting. That would probably even look cool as a disco ball, right? So we have loops going here. And here you can see the automatic detection. This does a really good job. It makes loops going around here. This is pretty cool. Maybe we just want this to go more like this way. And that should also make all of these go that way. And then here we get sort of a like a, a singularity. Is, is that what they call them here in this tool? I think they always talk about the singularities. Um, Right, so, I mean, this is okay. You can play with this as much as you want. I think this is really good. And I've seen, now that I've, I've sort of discovered this tool, I haven't discovered it, I saw it in that other uh, tutorial, but now that I know that this exists, um, I've also seen other tutorials about this tool. And I mean, they even use it for like furniture. So you have a, a super high poly mesh and you want to make, to remesh it to be, better uh, mesh for rendering and you want it quad based and you want it like almost square based um, you just draw the edges of the if it doesn't auto detect it but you just take your like a sofa and you draw the circles for the the pillows or whatever and draw lines for where the lines should be and this does a really good job so let's click solve and this would be this would be it so we get those loops around the eyes here you can see this is this is very nice. Now this is just a like quick and dirty click click click, but it's it's perfect I think. Now let's do some again some smoothing here. Extract mesh, and it already kind of looks like a disco ball again. Cool. Here you can see we do get some triangles. If you don't want those, you can do a pure quad, and you get one level of subdivisions, and then those triangles turn into quads. Uh, I think we want, we, we kind of go with this resolution. Cool. Now save. Let's do skull remeshed. Oops, this is what I'm talking about. Doesn't work because you have to type dot obj. Skull remeshed dot obj. Save it. Now import the obj, the skull remeshed. Where is it? It's tiny again. So we're gonna scale it up a little. Let's look through the camera. Now a skull always looks cool if you rotate it so that it's laying down. Let's do this, maybe scale it up some more like this. Uh, bring it 
back, rotate it a little so we can see more of the, uh, the, the overall shape. And this is awesome. Cool. Now let's do the same thing again. We go into edit mode on the edge. So this is uh, vertex edge face. We want the edge selector or you just hit number two on your keyboard. Because we can see here, some of the edges are not marked as sharp, but we want them all. So A, uh, mark sharp. Now they're all green. Cool. Let's get out. We do a edge split. Then we do the displace. We're going to displace 0 0.1. That's, that's a lot. Let's do 0 0.01, okay? Then we're gonna do solidify. We're gonna drag it to the left a little to make them stick out. Let's see what this looks like. Again, we can see we have a smooth shading. See the smooth shading here? We don't want that, we want flat like this. And also with the solidify, we want the rim offset one, just like before. So now let's go to the materials. First one should be the mirror. The second one for that offset of the solidifier should be the mirror sides. All set. And last modifier is of course the bevel. Let's see what we get. It's super tiny bevel, but that's fine. Uh, it's super tiny because we have clamp overlap, so there must be some really uh, tight pieces somewhere in there, probably in the nose or the eyes or something. And if you switch off clamp overlap, then you get huge uh, bevels. So let's do something like this manually, maybe even smaller. Okay, so we get tiny little bevels. That looks cool. And then we have our disco ball head. Of course, we can play with this displace. Maybe we don't even need the displace. Switch it off. Yeah, looks cool too. And then what I did for my final rendering of this skull uh, was I created another mirror material that was just darker. And then I, I vertex painted in here. No, I didn't vertex paint. I assigned, I selected the like the eyes, the eye sockets and the nose here and some of these cavities here. And then I assigned that darker mirror material to that to give it, you know, more three dimensionality because if you have all of these uh, mirrors in here, you can see this turns into a big mess that doesn't really add to the whole look. But this is how we get a disco ball skull and really a disco ball anything. If you already have perfect topology for this kind of thing, just use it with the modifiers, you're done. If you don't, use Instant Meshes, this cool tool here, and try to retopologize or remesh uh, your, your mesh. And then you can simply render out your own awesome looking disco ball thing, even with logos and stuff like that. So this is how you create your own disco ball or how you disco ballify really anything. Logos, letters, uh, 3D scans, anything you can, you can use this method. Um, and if you create something cool, maybe your own logo or something, then please do tag me because I would love to see what you can come up with. Or maybe you have uh, some tips for improving this, then of course, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said in the beginning of this video, in the next video, we're gonna take this concept, same thing, to the next level. We're gonna introduce animation nodes and recreate that keycap artwork that we saw in the Houdini video. So if you wanna see that, click over to the next video. I'll see you there. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, subscribe, like, notification bell, follow me, Instagram, Twitter. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Crispy out.